this is uh, Chris back again for another video. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, continue along the lines of the gas laws I uh, just talked about, or I talked earlier about the ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT, and, and said that uh, we, we derive all these other gas laws from the ideal gas law. Um, and, and from uh, certain uh, theories, uh, kinetic theories, that uh, maybe I'll talk about a little later on, uh, the kinetic gas theory and so on and so forth. And we know that a cornerstone of many of these gas laws, the ideal gas law and, and so on, is that we have to be talking about an ideal gas. Um, in an ideal gas, one of the most important concepts behind something being an ideal gas is that there are really are not intermolecular forces at play. Um, those might include um, London dispersion forces, um, uh, dipole-dipole type um, uh, interactions, and if, if you want you can uh, go ahead and review the intermolecular forces uh, um, video on the, the, I believe it'll be in the, the chemistry playlist, uh, review some of what that is. Uh, so, you know, really this, this concept of a completely ideal gas is, is rather fleeting in, in, in the real world, but we can still generalize and we can still generally say that these laws um, are a pretty good approximation of what occurs in nature. So we can use them and they're very accurate under most situations and circumstances. So the first one and by far one of the most important laws that comes up again and again and again uh, really in, in all of the sciences is Boyle's Law. And what is Boyle's Law? Boyle's Law is a law that looks at two variables. And those two variables are the variable of volume and pressure. So these are the only two variables that Boyle's Law looks at. So it's very important to remember that Boyle's Law does not look at temperature, okay? So when I and looking at Boyle's Law, or I'm asked a question, I have to think about which law applies here. We need to remember that Boyle's Law assumes that temperature is constant. So if they throw a, a um, question in there about the temperature increases or decreases, you automatically know that cannot be Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law only deals with volume and pressure, and it assumes that temperature is constant. Temperature does not change. So just keep that in the back of your mind, volume and pressure. And what Boyle's Law says is that volume and pressure are related inversely. So volume and pressure vary inversely. So let's think about that. If there's an inverse relationship, what that means is if, if my volume, we'll say, if my volume increases, what's going to happen to the pressure? And my pressure will decrease. Likewise, if my volume decreases, my pressure is going to increase. And I could also say that the other way around, that if my pressure decreases, my volume increases. Um, we could also say that if pressure increases, volume is going to decrease. They are inversely related. So the general formula that we often see used to describe the gas laws goes as such. <clears throat> Excuse me. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. P1 being pressure 1, V1 being volume 1, P2 being pressure 2, V2 being volume 2. So again, P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. So what I'm saying in this case is I'm comparing two conditions. I'm saying that I have a condition 
A that has a certain pressure, a certain volume, and then condition B, these change. So one set of conditions, another set of conditions. Another thing that is very important to appreciate is that we need to keep our units the same because this becomes a dimensional analysis and if you remember from dimensional analysis mathematics the dimensions have to be the same so if I'm talking about a pressure in millimeters of mercury over here I have to make sure that my pressure is also in millimeters of mercury so I can't have millimeters of mercury in centimeters of water and compare them I have to, I would have to convert that centimeters of water into millimeters of mercury or vice versa. I need to have the same units. Likewise, a very tricky thing that occurs is I'll get a volume, maybe my volume 1 will be 0.5 liters and volume 2 will be 510 milliliters. Again, we have to make sure that if I'm using one unit here, I use the same unit over here. So in this case, I could either convert 510 mils into 0 0.510 liters and have them both in liters or I could make them both milliliters 500 milliliters 510 milliliters either way I need to have the same unit I need to be working with the same units so don't let don't let those tricky problems fool you guys Okay, so let me give you an intuition for Boyle's Law. And the intuition, I think, kind of goes like this. And I think of the, the term Boyle's Balloon. And I think of a balloon, a little helium balloon. I'm holding on to it on the ground. And I let go of that balloon. As that balloon goes up in the air, we know that the atmospheric pressure is going to decrease. And the volume inside of the balloon will what? Well, it will increase. The balloon will get bigger as we go up in the air. Boyle's Law, right? Decreased pressure, increased volume. Likewise, if I take that big old balloon and I pull it back down to the ground, well, my atmospheric pressure is going to increase, which means that the volume inside of the balloon will decrease again. Boyle's Law. The same thing applies uh, with diving underwater. If I have a bubble of gas floating around in my bloodstream, and let's say that um, I'm deep underwater, there's a lot of pressure, that bubble's going to be small, but as I go to the surface, maybe I go to the surface real quickly, that, that bubble of gas, because the pressure decreases around it, is going to increase. The volume will increase, and that's one of the the concepts behind what was known as the bends or decompression sickness. Um, also, Boyle's Law explains kind of how our lungs work. If I take a deep breath in, my diaphragm drops because it receives signals from the phrenic nerve, it drops. The pressure inside of my chest becomes negative compared to the pressure in the atmosphere, and that decreased pressure results in what? Well, in an increased volume, right? Air rushes into the lungs, the lungs fill up with more volume and my volume increases. Boyle's Law also is what's used to calculate certain lung volumes in pulmonary function testing, specifically um, something known as the body box or um, what they call um, body plethysmography. Um, and that's something you guys will get to do if you're in your respiratory therapy. The body box, again, uses Boyle's Law. Very important. So let me go ahead and just give you guys a quick problem uh, just to kind of cement this a little bit. And what I'm going to say is I have atmospheric pressure at um, sea level, mean sea level, standard atmospheric conditions. And we know that pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. And I have a volume of gas in a container. Maybe it's a lung whatever you want to look at, you just think of a container, a lung, whatever, and at sea level, I have 0.5 liters. Okay, so we can say that this is condition A here. And then what I'm going to say is, well, what happens is that atmospheric pressure decreases. Maybe I go up really high in a plane really quick or something like that happens. And the pressure decreases to 700 
millimeters of mercury. Okay? So it was 760, now it's 700 millimeters of mercury. And what I want to know is, what is going to happen to my volume? Okay? How will volume change? And this over here is condition B. So then all it becomes is just a hunt and peck and, and basically a plug and chug. Remember the formula. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. Okay, so what I do is I go, okay, well, this is pressure one. Okay, this is volume one. So there's, there's condition A, right? 760 times 0 0.5 equals. And then over here, well, this is my P2, right? And this must be my V2 equals 700 times X, right? I don't know this, so I'm going to make that X. Now, at this point... All I have is just linear algebra, right? Just a linear algebraic problem. So, 700x equals 760 multiplied by 0 0.5. Or, uh, yeah, 760 multiplied by 0 0.5. Well, that's pretty easy, right? We just do that calculation, and it's just half of 760, or 380. So 380 equals 700x. Now what do I need to do to get rid of that x? Just basic algebra. Well, i got to get x by itself here, so I need to divide by 700. What I do to one side, I also have to do the other, 700. That leaves me with x equals 380 divided by 700, which gives me 0.5. See if everybody can see that. Four, three liters. Is this consistent with what Boyle's Law says? That if my pressure decreases, does my volume increase? Well, I start out at 0.5 liters, and my volume increased to 0.543 liters. So, Boyle's Law does work. Hopefully you guys found that helpful, and I'll continue along with the other uh, gas laws and subsequent videos. Thanks again, guys. Take care.